stadium uh, fire away, I guess. Or yeah. You want to talk about it? Uh, sure, excited yeah. uh, to get some fan feedback. I know we had an email go out uh, uh, earlier this week or earlier today, right? Today. Uh, uh, I just got back from uh, SEC meetings, but uh, we're really excited to engage our fans and uh, the process of uh, you know determining what's that right uh, uh, formula for, for what this stadium wants to be in terms of club seats and suites and some of the things that are so important from a fan experience standpoint and also from a business model standpoint to make sure that uh, we can deliver this project uh, in a way that uh, has a ton of success and gets us where we all want to be. Questions? It's awesome. You know, we were hoping we'd have some uh, some pretty pictures and some concepts ready uh, before we finished playing this year, and, and that things kind of fell together. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of work to do in terms of the te technical design once we land on a, a final concept, but uh, we're really excited to be able to take advantage of this momentum that uh, Tony and this team has uh, built here for the last couple of years. Seeing some of those drawings, does that mean like this road and maybe some of uh, Todd Helton are also going to be shut down with the expansion? Uh, certainly during construction, there's going to be times there. Uh, we're looking at uh, different, doing some different things here where uh, a, a road may be part of a stadium on game day, but on non-game day, it can be, have a dual purpose. Uh, so looking at different ways to expand this tight footprint. What we love about this footprint is proximity to all of our other facilities and the idea of getting as many fans as close to the field as possible. All those things are great, but uh, we need to do a better job uh, with the new stadium of providing better experiences, concessions, restrooms. The lines are too long, we know that. The fan experience needs to get better with the new stadium. Danny, one of the things I'm hearing from the students is additional student seating. Is that something that's also in consideration? I think it's really important in all of our venues. The, the students are the lifeblood of our, our game day atmosphere. Uh, I think our, our students have really uh, captivated uh, the, the attention of, of our, our, our fan base and certainly they've jumped on and created a ton of excitement in this stadium and we want to build on that. We want to create the best student experience in the country and in all of our venues. Fans want to encourage to give some of their input on the seating options. I know you guys just released it. Have you had any early feedback from fans yet? Oh yeah, we're getting a lot of feedback. <laughs> our fans aren't short of ideas. My, my Twitter feed's been blowing up, but I know uh, just in some early reports from our our staff, the emails have been coming in, and we have deposits happening on club seats and uh, all sorts of interest as we expected. Uh, so we're we're really uh, looking forward to the next couple of weeks to figure out uh, what what the right equation is here and, and what what exactly we need to build. It might, go, go it might be in the plans uh, the photos that you release, but the front of the stadium will look different. It's going to look a whole lot different. I don't know. Did we release uh, any? Uh, yeah. There's a few different options. Yeah, we're still looking at, uh, but it'll it'll look drastically different. Yeah, I think there's just with the premium tower uh, that we're going to be building, about the top third of this structure behind us will be gone and uh, rebuilt. The footprint will come out more, and it'll have a totally different look. Uh, if, you, if you look at uh, some of our other facilities, especially the west side of the Newland Stadium, uh, we want to try to have some consistency with how we finish out that building and, and this building as well. Danny, what's the time frame, of the length of gathering feedback in terms of then bricks and mortar, and what's the timeline you're looking at for all of that? We're ready to move pretty quickly. Uh, so in terms of concepts, we've narrowed it down a ton. In our premium area, it, whether it's nine suites or two suites and 400 club seats or 150 club seats those things can move and it doesn't change what we're designing all that much so that's what we're really looking for uh, for from our fans is uh, just some some feedback on what our demand is in some of those different areas premium seating we know there's a ton of interest in it also plays an enormous role in how we'll fund the building uh, it's really important to me that we uh, are, are disciplined about uh, having projects pay for themselves. And so whether it's Neyland Stadium or this project here, through a combination of philanthropy or revenue generating assets like club seats and suites and things like that, we want the project to pay for itself. So our operating budget, when we get it back up towards the top of the SEC, like it used to be, we can use that on operating expenses and really support our programs at a high level. You guys got about 60 million, I think, approved in the proposed budget you sent. Is that a factor in this at all? It is, you know, we had, all of those projects that went to the state, that's part of the process we have to follow. That, that Some have called that a request. All of these projects for, for uh, our athletics department will be privately funded. It's not, it's not a, a state request, but uh, that's a, a very soft number at this point. Construction costs are, are rising. Uh, I'm hoping that that stops, and uh, by the time we break ground here, it's, it's not quite that bad. We'll, we'll see.
the building out the right field. Practice facilities, they're gonna have like dorms, apartments, are you gonna go up a little bit with that? We're, we're looking at uh, 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 some public-private partnerships we, we, we wanna explore on, on that space. Uh, the potential uh, for potentially a, a, a residence hall solution and our university has unbelievable demand with applications for incoming freshmen we don't have enough beds and that's a, that's a priority for all of us uh, we, we need an indoor uh, infield for our baseball program it's a huge priority for us as well so uh, that, that's what's depicted in the rendering there uh, you know, what, what Tony talks about, it, you guys have heard me reference before, is the Hornet's Nest concept. He loves the, the passion of our fans, how close we are, they are to the field and the impact they, they have on, on the game. Uh, and I think, you know, we're not necessarily, we don't necessarily have a specific end game. We don't have to be the biggest stadium in college baseball, but let's be the best. Let's be the, the, the most unique, uh, have the best home field advantage. Uh, and I think with our fans, we, we can do that if we, if we do this project right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, All right. Thanks, guys.